Welcome back everyone to the GGBL. It's been a month since the last time that we got an update on this league, but we're back baby, we're back. And it's time for the GGBL World Series or what most people want to call it in the Discord, the Gold Series. Either way, no matter what you call it, we got the Phoenix Firebirds taking on the Los Angeles Knights. Knights will be hosting the Phoenix Firebirds in game number one and we have a pitching matchup. Brick Porcello, the veteran, taking on Janiel Rivera, the rookie. Look at this. Three starts in the postseason, and Rivera hasn't lost a game. He is 3-0. But we know how Phoenix is. We know how tough that this team offensively is. So Rivera's going to have his gonna have his work cut out for him. And so far, so good here for Phoenix. We've got a base runner on. That is Pedro Alvarez with the infield single. And then take a look at Franklin Barreto. Sending this ball deep to the warning track out there in right field. See how this plays out. We got Jesse Winker, runner on first base. That's Alvarez taking off on that knuckleball, and he's in there safely. Lost the helmet. He was running so hard. He didn't have to. Get a huge jump off that knuckleball. And now we got a runner in scoring position here for Jesse Winker, and this ball is deep. Acuna giving chase at the track. Oh my goodness, it's over the wall. Acuna can't grab this one. It, he made it at least me. And the audience is probably thinking that, oh, this is just another fly ball. Just a normal, routine fly ball, easily catchable. But that two-run home run puts Phoenix up on top. So in the early going here, Rick Porcello already got a man on base. That is Luis Basabe. He's going to get on with a stolen base. So he's leading them off there. And then with this line drive by Nick Castellanos to none other than Jesse Winker makes the play. And that's going to be doing it for the bottom of the first. Bottom of seconds, Michael Conforto, who we know is... Always seems to come up with a home run in gameplay. Every single time that this guy comes up to the comes up to bat, comes up to the plate, comes up to the dish, he's always driving extra base hits. He's always hitting home runs. It's really tough to be out here to uh, face face off against Conforto. But Acuna will score on this knock. Conforto up again. He's going to swing and a miss. Nice pitch there by Porcello. Two two game in game number one. Middle part of the game here. Top fourth. And Phoenix is going to ground out here to give it back to L.A. Bottom four. Corey Lee. Two-run shot. That's big time for L.A. Puts them back up on top. Four to two. Actually, they never had the lead. But four to two now. Porcello grinding his way through this game. And Conforto again. And the bottom of the fifth inning with another runner on. Another Home run for him. This time a two-run shot. It is six home run for him. It's eight to five as we jump forward here in the top of the eighth. Phoenix trying to claw their way back here. They're going to make this thing eight to six as Basabe camps underneath. This one makes the play, and the run will score. That is Barreto with the run score with the tag up. And now we've got Xavier Warren, the catcher, in the top of the ninth with two down. Yeah, we've skipped all the way to the top of the ninth. Phoenix... A little bit of a late charge here. We'll see what happens. They've got one more out to give up. Eight to seven. Jimenez strikes out Pedro Alvarez, and that is going to do it. So Janir Rivera hangs on to get the win here in game number one. He is undefeated in postseason play. How do you like that? Overall, he pitched great. I thought he pitched great. Might not have had a ton of strikeouts, but, you know, for a rookie... I think he did all right. He took down Rick Porcello, ran the veteran. And against a pretty tough hitting Phoenix Firebirds team, I think he did a great job. Box score, you can take a look at that, guys. We have Porcello only two strikeouts. Seawald actually came in and gave up, uh, had five strikeouts. I shouldn't say gave up, but he did have five strikeouts on the day. Simming game number two, though, LA wins that one by the final score of five to two. And take a look at the score in the bottom of the ninth. Did you guys catch that? Three runs for L.A. in the bottom of the ninth. So they won the game 5-2. to two. You do the math. They won on a walk-off. <laughs> so all the mojo is on the L.A. Knights side of things, guys. And uh, they're up on the series two games to nothing. And as you guys know that have followed this series for a little while, and you kind of get an idea how we did things in the XBA, how we do things here, even in Royals and even in this series when we had our playoffs in year number one, how we like to do things is make sure that you, you play game one, set the tone, simulate game two, and you know we're, here we are in game three. got to play that one, of course, because LA wins this thing. They can go up 3 nothing, And then, of course, in an elimination scenario, you got to watch that one too, right? So 
kind of get an idea how we do this. And hopefully Phoenix gets a W here. Rico Ramos, their youngster, their custom prospect. They want to get this dub. they got to do it in front of their hometown fans. They've got the three games set here coming up. So if you can reel off three games in a row, you've now got the advantage. You're three, three games to two at that point. You go back to L.A. It's still going to be a tough test for them. But either way, Rico Ramos pitching well. Pitching really well. Already got two strikeouts here in the top of the first. Let's go to the bottom of the first. Emerson Hancock already with two down. And Jesse Winker getting on base again. This guy just continues to rake every time we see him in gameplay. He's just like, he's like the poor man's Conforto, I guess you'd say, in GGBL play at least. In real life, I would probably take Jesse Winker over Conforto, but what this is GGBL talk we're talking about here. 3-2 pitch to none other than the man we're talking about, Michael Conforto. Rico Ramos shuts him down for the third strikeout of the game. Still top two. I think that was Kyle Seeger. Rico Ramos throws him out. It is Kyle Seeger, number 15 there. So Rico Ramos still pitching good. Man, he's shutting him down here in the early going. See if he can carry that momentum into the latter half of this game. Drew Mendoza, base knock all the way to the wall. Acuna fires it back into the cutoff man, and there you go. So leadoff double here for Phoenix. Derek Dietrich hitting 304 in the postseason. Laces this thing right past Kyle Seeger, and Mendoza's not stopping. Conforto fires smartly to the second base to avoid that runner getting in there and to take the extra bag. I knew that runner was going to score anyway. It is 1-0. Firebirds, top third. Basabe going to swing and a miss. And Rico Ramos is just throwing darts. Already, guys, top third, five strikeouts. He's just continuing to dominate this tough hitting LA offense. Let's go to the bottom fourth. We got another base knock here for Phoenix, and another run is going to score. We got a possible triple here for Phoenix. He's going to slide in safely. That is Drew Mendoza again. This guy has been raking today. Two nothing Phoenix. Bottom four, still Basabe can't get can't get a really good throw off, and that's going to score Mendoza. It is now three to nothing. Phoenix here in the fourth inning. Let's go ahead and jump forward. Top five. This is going to be a hard hit ball into the gap. That is over the wall. The short wall, the short fence out there. Lewis Brinson is going to hit this home run. I was saying Basabe. It is actually Lewis Brinson. 52 and 25. Get those screwed up a little bit. So three to one as Lewis Brinson puts LA up on the board. Top five. Take a look here. What do we, what do we got? You got Corey Lee again. You guys saw him in game number one hitting home runs. He hits another one to tie the ball game up. So no matter how good that Rico Ramos was pitching, it's 3-3. Three to three. It's a brand new ball game. Let's go bottom five. 3-2 pitch, and here's Acuna. He can't catch this one. He can't catch it. Xavier Warren, the catcher, going to get on with a one-out ground wheel double. This is going to go down as a walk pass ball, but either way, it is a walk, so the catcher will trot the first base safely. That's not going to allow the runner on second, which would have been Xavier Warren, to get to third. He didn't want to take that chance. Either way, fly ball to Lewis Brinson. He makes the catch. And now we got runners on the corner here for Jesse Winker. He's going to draw a walk himself. So, Emerson Hancock already got 92 pitches up until this point. This ball could fall in. That would have been disastrous for LA, but good defense by Nick Mayton. So they get out of the jam. Paul Seawald, after all of that work from Rico Ramos, he then allows two runners on base with nobody down. Top six, Castellanos comes up, Seawald comes in and gets the double play. That is huge, 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 huge for Phoenix. But now you gotta get Conforto, and they do. And they do, Conforto shakes his head. All right, all right, I see you. I see a tip of the cap, sir, tip of the cap. They got it done. Two outs here in the bottom sixth. Conforto camps underneath this. They make the catch. And we still got a tie ball game. Top seven. Connor Joe coming up. Base knock up the middle with one down. Seawald still in there. We'll see if they make a pitching change. They won't. They'll continue here with Corey Lee. And he grounds out into the double play. That is crucial again for Phoenix. That's two double play balls. Seawald has created since he took the mound today. So he's been, he's coming out of the pen and he's doing a really good job here. Sean Poppin giving up a two-run blast. A two-run dinger. 
five to three. Renato Nunez, third of the postseason. That puts Phoenix up on top here late in this ball game, and that is a crucial, crucial hit. And you can see it on his face. Sean Poppin knew it. And that's going to do it. That's going to do it, guys. Phoenix gets the W here in game at number three. We're going to get that thing to a game at number four. Try to even this thing up. Two games to two. It's going to be a tough test. As always, LA is just way too tough. But they snuck out a win over this tough LA team. Offensively, everyone was alive <laughs> today. They, uh, they got the job done. They got the job done. When it mattered the most, they hung on and they got a win. So two games to one. We are not going to simulate this one. We're going to watch this thing. And let's see if Phoenix can get another W. They've got Elior Letterman out on the mound here today. Eight strikeouts, two walks in the postseason. He's pitched two games. He's 1-0. And he's starting it off right. There is Luis Basave playing center field today. There you go. So clean inning for Elior. Started it off with a K. Let's go to the bottom of the first. We got Shane McClanahan taking the mound here for LA. You can see up on the screen, man. Seeger striking out against Letterman. We got McClanahan striking guys out. We got Connor Joe striking out. So both pitchers in a little bit of a pitching duel, so to speak, right off the get-go. Here's Acuna again having trouble out there in right field. Jared Dietrich with the one-out double. Drew Mendoza going to hit this one long and far and deep. But that's not going to be enough as Acuna camps underneath this one and ends the second inning. Let's go to the top of the third. Letterman strikes out Basabe yet again. Let's go to the bottom of the third. McClanahan strikes out Connor Blair. Second strikeout of the game. Xavier Warren comes up with that one out in the bottom of the third. Starts getting something going here for Phoenix in the, in the third inning here. Let's see if they can capitalize. Pedro Alvarez, base knock up the middle. Two runners on now. Let's see if Phoenix can capitalize here in the bottom of the third. We got Barreto drawing a walk. So McClanahan, a little bit of a jam. Base is juiced and right near the bag. Guzman tags it, throws to second. Good save there by Connor Joe. But either way, second and third runners are safe. Here's Renato Nunez. Base knock here. One run's going to score. But look at Acuna. What time is it? Not on my watch. <laughs> what a frozen rope by Acuna. Firebirds thinking, now's the time. What time is it? It's scoring time. No, sir. Not on Acuna's watch. He ain't telling no time. No scoring time. Two Zippo Phoenix top four. Castellanos gets a leadoff double. And next up, Kyle freaking Seeger. This man has made his presence felt in this LA lineup throughout the playoffs, throughout the postseason. Six home runs. And he has been nothing short of amazing. Nothing short of clutch. Defensively, offensively, he's been he's been the whole package for LA. He really has. Still, top four. And Connor Joe hits another home run. That's number four for him in the postseason. And Letterman is he's he's feeling it now. He's feeling it now. He just gave up the lead. Four to two. Top five. Conforto comes up. Hits another home run. Number seven for him. It's now six to two. You're in the bottom fifth inning. LA up on top. Acuna, strong throw back into the cut. And that's going to do it for Shane McClanahan. He pitched good. He pitched really well. So you got two runners on, though. You can't lose the game. No matter what happens here with Akito Radon. He could give up a three-run homer. Still wouldn't lose the game. Could possibly get a no decision with a L.A. loss. But, you know, a lot of things have yet to happen. We got a ground ball here. Maiden can't handle it. It's going to score the run. Phoenix clawing their way back. Acuna trying to dive for this thing. Can't get it. It's now 6-4. Josh Fuentes with a big ground rule double. Akito Radon, though, does strike out Drew Mendoza. Had himself a nice game last game that we saw. Game number three. Connor Blair does strike out. Can't tack on any more runs. Acuna comes up in the top of the seventh, and this one is long gone. Winker looks up, can't get to this. Fans, you got to throw it back, though. You got to throw it back. 380-foot blast for Acuna, number seven for him. In the postseason, and I think, you know, the fat lady might be singing. Maybe? Just kidding. Jesse Winker says, let's get that run back, boys. 7-2 Cinco now. That was a full count pitch, by the way. You're not looking to hit a home run on a full count. 
<laughs> you're just trying to get on base at that point. But either way, man, home run for Winker. It's now 7-5. Akita Raydown does strike out Derek Dietrich. And then next batter up, Josh Fuentes pops up into foul ground. And that's going to do it for Phoenix. Let's go to the top of the eighth. We've got Brad Brock in to pitch. And with already a runner on base, that's going to go all the way to the wall. That's going to score one. As long as they can get this throw in, it's a good throw. But just, just not in time. Guzman will score. Connor Joe with a big knock. And then Corey Lee comes up clutch with another base knock. He's been hitting really well this postseason. Connor Blair gets a good throw in, but again, just not in time. And L.A., yeah, they're they're uh, laying the whooping stick on Phoenix at this point late in this game. It's already 9-5. to five. They're allowing more base runners to get on. They get 10-5 here in the top of the eighth. Bottom eight now. Here's a ground ball. Run will score. They'll trade the run for the out. Connor Joe makes that nice throw. It's now 10 to 6. Here's Ronald Guzman coming up in that top of the ninth inning, and he's going to send a deep drive to center. And Connor Blair looking up, giving chase. That one's over the wall. That's a solo home run for Guzman, number two in the postseason. And then Luis Basave comes up with two more runners getting on. It's 11 to 6. He's going to hit this one over Blair's head. That's going to go all the way to the wall. Two runs are going to score here. Look at that 80 speed. Rounding second, heading for third. And look at he's going to go for an inside the parker. Luis Basabe inside the park home run in the top of the ninth inning. And then Castellanos leans into this one for a two-run shot. The top of the eighth and the top of the ninth inning in this game for Phoenix pitching staff. They couldn't get these guys out. L.A. just... Just busted this thing wide open. 16 to 6 is your final score, guys. Nine runs. Over half of their runs scored in this game came in the late the latter half of the game. The last two innings of the game. That's a crazy statistic. Look at the bottom of the order. Seeger, Guzman, Joe, all multiple hits. The home run totals, Guzman, Castellano, Seeger. That's three names right there, plus the other guys that were listed. That was like, what, six home runs, six, seven home runs for L.A. today? Nuts, nuts. Everybody in the lineup for Phoenix had a hit, but they they couldn't hold these guys down. You would think after getting six runs, you should win a ball game. You should, you should. In GGBL terms, though, maybe you need 10. Sometimes you need 10, but, man, three games to one lead, I feel like Phoenix really let that game slip away from them, but they got to get it done now. They're forced with an elimination situation, and they're relying on Rick Porcello in this game. They could have possibly gone with Max Freed. He was at 50%. Remember, we haven't, we didn't see Max Freed in gameplay in this series. He wasn't ready for game one, and he definitely wasn't ready for game two. Well, no, he did pitch game two, I should say. So he pitched game two. He wasn't ready for game three then because he just pitched. And, uh, you know, he's just about 50% health at this point. You guys can go check the stream over on Twitch. He wasn't – it's a tough situation, man. If you win this game here, then you go with Max Freed in game number six. But you got to get there first. I understand the methodology. I understand the strategy there. But it was a, definitely a tough call between Freed or Porcello. But they went with Porcello here, and so far it ain't looking too hot because we've got stolen base here for Acuna. He gets on base, and you saw the, the run that scored was like almost a little bit of a bunt, a swinging bunt at that point with the runner on third base just allowing to get in. Porcello made a nice play just to get there, get the throw off to Xavier Warren. They just couldn't get the tag down. But, man, either way, you know, L.A. scores two runs on top of the first, and Porcello, he's got to lock this thing down. He's got to get it done. He's got to find a way to get it done. Wes Benjamin, 19-6, and six, has not pitched in the postseason. This is his first appearance in the postseason. Otherwise, we'd have some statistics there for you. Not 19 and 6. Won a lot of games. Won a lot of games for LA. Almost a 20 game winner at this point. So he's going to come on and try to solidify this thing, lock this thing down, get a win here, and win year two's GGBL championship. But Phoenix has got something to say. They're going to claw back here. Barreto gets that RBI double. It's now 2 to 1, but Porcello is just grinding at this point. You can see him struggling right now. This runner is going to score. Again, they just can't play clean baseball right here defensively. Just not enough not, not just not enough wherewithal right now, guys. Just not enough wherewithal, wherewithal. Acuna scores that runner on a swinging bunts, you know. Porcello can't feel his position. 
quick enough, leading to the first run of the game. Then you got this, the pass ball. Now you've got this here in the top of the third inning. It's 4-1. to one. Porcell is just not pitching good, man. He is grinding through this thing. Hopefully you got a good defensive play here. Nope. Everybody's safe. And Alvarez is going to throw Barreto off the bag, and then that's going to lead to a possible double play situation here. Can we get something going there? No. Another defensive mental error. Physical errors you can deal with. Mental errors you can't. And these are mental errors. Physically, yes, you got to make that throw. But mentally, I mean, this is just not being checked into the game. It's back-to-back -back errors throwing a guy off second base. That's not good, guys. Six to one here, top third. And then this base knock is going to lead to another run. Another good throw from Connor Blair. What, what's this guy supposed to do out in center field? Right? Blaine Hardy, top third again, guys. We're still here. Blaine Hardy walks in a run. And at this point, you're down by seven runs. I don't know if you're going to catch up. I really don't. You're going to need the offense to really get sparked here. Pedro Alvarez with a runner already on base. He gets a. No out double, ground rule double. This base knock back up the middle. We could score two. Little hesitation there. Little hesitation by Alvarez, but he still slides in safely. Made the play closer than it should have been, and now they've cut it with, within five. Wes Benjamin going to strike out Derek Dietrich, and that's going to do it for half of the inning for Phoenix. Another bases juiced situation here for Phoenix. Jesse Winker camps underneath this, makes the catch. Not a very good throw, not a competitive throw. It is now 9-3 with runners still on first and second. Let's now jump here to the bottom of the fifth inning with two down. We've got a base knock past Kyle Seeger. That's going to score one run. So they get the run back. Remember, it was 8-3. Now it's 9-4. So these guys are trading blows back-to-back -back here. But Dietrich strikes out. Lefty on lefty. Benjamin wins that battle. And we continue on with a 9-4 game. L.A. Hunter Strickland comes on to relief. Seeger up to bat. Draws a walk, and this big moonshot by Ronald Guzman, a grand salami. In a 9-4 to four game, he sends this thing over the fence, and that was a 13-4 to four game. Well, bottom nine, 16-6, to six, and at least we got to show this, right? We got to show this to two-run homer. Dietrich has now pulled this thing to... 16 to 8. So they're they're halfway there. They're halfway there. But guys, you know how this thing ends, don't you? You know how this thing ends. In a 16 to 8 ball game, Cody Reed only needs one more out. And that's gonna be a strikeout. The Los Angeles Knights are your year two GGBL World Series champions. Congratulations to LA on being the best team. In all of the GGBL in year two, they had a heck of a season. Over 100 games in the win column. And, of course, with that big, fearsome trio of Acuna, Castellanos, and Conforto, this team was going to be the team to beat all year long, and they got it done. Now, they didn't start the year off very good. Remember, San Francisco was really trying them. They are really testing them in that NL West, but you know what? They got it done. They got they had a really good offseason getting Acuna, uh, Janine Rivera in a draft, right? And then they've got Daniel Smith, again, again, another custom prospect in the draft. So the Los Angeles Knights are the product of a really good offseason, and they had all their needs met. They had really good pitching performances out of Janine Rivera. Obviously, when you got Wes Benjamin winning 19 games in a season, uh, that's really going to drive success for your team now phoenix hats off to you guys man phoenix had a heck of a season you, you can't downplay that guys i know i know that the story's been well out there that i just did not consider this team gonna do anything this season i looked at their offense i looked at their lineup and i thought where are the runs gonna come from from this team now i gave credit to where credit was due their pitching staff looked legit it was legit it's what carried them all all season long and when that faltered, when that faltered a little bit, they had their offense to lean on, and uh, they did have they had had a pretty they had a pretty competent and competitive offense all season. So hats off to Phoenix on a really good year, and I would expect them to be back. I would expect them to be back, not maybe in the in the GGBL World Series, but at least playing at playoff caliber level, depending on what they lose in free agency. 
depending on what happens with trades and what happens with regression and progression. They got some old guys to consider on their team, of course, with like Castro and Dietrich and some other players that we've uh, that we've mentioned before. Kyle Seeger for LA would be one to uh, to think of on the other side for for LA. But yeah, I would expect both these teams to continue with playoff success. I think a lot of teams that we see up on the bracket have an ability to get back into the playoffs next year. But as we know, in the GGBL with the offseason, a lot of things can can shift a team's fortunes. We saw that completely with a lot of teams that uh, that we see here in, in the bracket, of course, with uh, San Francisco and Nashville and Las Vegas, Columbus. These types of teams, they did well. In, uh, in the draft and through trades and through offseason in general. So, guys, that's it for year two. We had a heck of a run. Now, I do want to update you guys on what the offseason is going to look like here. So, in the last couple of weeks, last couple of days, I should say, I made my I made my thoughts known about the GGBL, kind of what I, what I wanted to do with it. I wanted to cancel it. I wanted to basically do year three as a simulation and just kind of let the CPU decide off season things and basically go through year four, five, six and do all this simulation stuff to kind of get the series wrapped up. And basically what I was trying to get across was guys, it just, if you just, it's just hard to explain, man. It's just hard to explain unless you're, unless you're in my shoes about it. I don't think I can really do it justice, at least the explanation of it. It's, um, it's, it's hard to, put in the amount of work for the amount of views that this series gets. Now, I know a lot of people out there might be looking at that saying, dude, it's 400 views, man. Like, you could be getting 100. You could be getting less than 100, right? So you sound really greedy right now. But it's like, guys, if, the, if we were getting 1,000 views on this thing, it would be well worth the investment, the time investment to put this thing together. I don't think a lot of you guys know how hard this league is to run. You got... 30 teams to manage. You got to make sure that the 25 man rosters are set. You got to make sure that the trade offers are fair, the ones you guys vote on. You got to make sure that the injuries are taken care of. You got to make sure that the minor league system is is intact. The 40 man rosters are set. People aren't going into the rule five. You got free agency to worry about. Like it's a, it's a lot, man. It is a lot of a lot of uh, spot checking. A lot of T's to cross, a lot of I's to dot, you name it. Like, if you've ever done this type of thing, you kind of get an idea of how difficult this really is. So, when I'm talking about the time investment that goes into this series, that's where I, I need I need the payoff. I need the payoff to kind of counteract that, kind of balance that, making the time feel worth it. Right? So I don't mean to sound greedy. I don't mean to come off like I'm slapping you guys in the face, the ones that are here actually watching this thing, the ones that are really invested into this thing. It means a lot that you guys are still out here supporting the series, but you kind of got to see it from my perspective. It is very tough to understand that the amount of work, while the work is happening, while the editing is happening, while the commentary is happening, and while the the grinding to record these videos and get gameplay and get all the team's lineups and rosters set, it's hard to know while you're doing that that this is only going to amount to 400 views. That's all you're going to get. It's just a constant reminder in the back of your head. So so how we're going to do this moving forward is I posted this community vote form um, up on a video and I've, I've then not allowed any more responses so we're stuck at 37 and here are your results so through 37 responses you guys want one video per week that's going to be a regular season upload on youtube a highlight reel video we're going to have like three matchups throughout a month so basically when we talk about an april matchup uh we'll show one game in april we'll show another game in April, we'll show the third game in April, right? And then we'll show a game of the week on Friday. So really you get four games total, but two videos total. So you get one regular season upload and then you get a, a game of the week that you guys will vote on on a Friday, okay? So that's what you guys voted for. So 21 people voted for that out of 37, so that's gonna win the vote. Now for the format, 
this one was a little tough because it was really close. Only one vote separated each thing. So what you guys want is you want me to choose the matchups. And then you guys are going to choose the game of the week. So that's how that's going to work out. So you guys get to have a say in what game you want to see. Now, as far as the platform, where do you want to see the streams? 73% said YouTube. Only 27% said to stream it on Twitch. So we're going to stick it back over to YouTube. So no more Twitch integration here for GGBL. The desired YouTube video length, you guys were all about 15 to 20 and 20 to 25. So really 77% of you said keep a GGBL upload between 15 and 25 minutes. I can do that. I can do that. With three games to show, I can do that. Maybe I can sneak a fourth one in there plus a game of the week. You know, maybe I can be flexible on that. But that's how this that's how this is all gonna work for the GGBL moving forward. So basically the, the objective was to lessen the workload, lessen the editing load lessen the amount of time that it takes for this league to operate and for this league to run. Now, I think after we get the All-Star break finished up, I think we can move a little faster. So once we get away from July, I can start doing like, uh, I can start finding matchups that make sense that get us to the playoff race a little bit quicker. We can start getting in the playoffs a lot faster because that's really what it comes down to, what you guys want to see, right? So regular season is fun to create the storylines and build that stuff up. But the playoffs is what you guys really want to determine. I mean, that's what we that's what we're doing this for, right? We want to see a we want to see a winner. We want to see who's gonna win the whole thing and then move into the offseason to start building teams up again. That's where the excitement comes from, in my opinion. The offseason, playoffs, offseason, what moves are being made, where players are gonna go, that stuff, right? That's what creates the drama. So that's how we're gonna operate the GGBL. I just wanted to keep you guys updated on this. Now, as far as the offseason goes. The offseason is going to work a little bit of the same way that we did in the past. So the offseason is going to work in phases just like we did last offseason. So offseason phase number one is kind of a preview. So you guys get to vote on what teams are going to get a new jersey, a new uniform, and what teams are going to get new logos. You guys also get to vote on what teams you think are, are deserved of getting a new stadium as well. So last year we had two new stadiums. This year we're gonna only have one. I definitely wanted to give Philly their new stadium. They didn't win the vote, but I wanted to give them a stadium, but I'll have that form up for you guys in off season phase number one, that video for you as an off season intro. We'll also see what MLB players are gonna be coming over to the GGBL for year number three as well. So guys, that's um, that's gonna do it for this video, uh, letting you know you know, when the off-season intro video that's going to post next week, we'll talk about a lot of things. We'll talk about the voting. We'll talk about the, the free agent lists. We'll talk about what players are coming over from the major leagues. And we'll talk about the uh, live stream format for the wheel spin for free agency and the wheel spin for the custom prospects. So, guys, it's going to do it. Leave a like if you like this thing. Again, congratulations to LA and congratulations to Phoenix as the runner-up for year number two. I'll see you guys in the off-season introduction video next week. As always, thank you for watching and peace.